Um, I am right now still in Stockholm. Um, I'm feeling excited, nice, shaky in a good way. And uh, so whatever you need to do, if you need to move around or turn your camera off and do something different or do some push-ups or, you know, whatever you need to do, just do it. And the invitation is just to be here uh, as long as you like, as long as it is resonating with you. So there's no obligation to be here. And if you feel like leaving at any time, um, you just leave. So um, I'm so happy that you're here. And... Um, I will uh, guide you through this day. So we have about 90 minutes. Today is the first Monday of the month and I call that the monthly Monday. And what I'm doing on this day is um, it's the same time when all the other Monday um, Academy meetings are. But on this day, it is open to the public, to everybody. Everybody who is in the Academy can invite some friends and people or kind of anybody else that uh, that we show who we are, what we do, um, what you can get here, how you can use that stuff of somatic consent. And um, so today is this first Monday. So different things in the academy. I can share later a little bit more about that. We have every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're doing the waking up the hands meditation only. We do that today as well. And we have once a month a consent lab every last Saturday. So. Um, it depends on how many people there are. So sometimes we have just two or three and sometimes there are 20 people and I can't let more in. So it pretty much depends on who wants to join. And um, so I just want to share a little bit about myself. My name is Matt. I'm the founder of the Somatic Consent Academy and the developer of the Somatic Consent Engagement System. I'm on the journey of um, personal development since 25 years, so I started in 99 or so. And I made that my profession in 2010. And since then, I'm a nomad traveling around, sharing my findings with the world. Um, I've been in different Tantra schools in different um, areas of life. Hi, Alisi, welcome. Um, Alice is, by the way, the ambassador of Brazil. She has been to the last year training and uh, absolutely switched on person. Then 2014, I met uh, the so-called queen of consent, Betty Martin. I just went into the, the dynamics of consent in the depth, studied the nervous system, uh, everything that has to do with trauma and uh, found a deeper layer of um, embodiment um, through this practice founded the Somatic Consent, uh, no, the School of Consent in 2017. And in 2019, um, I just made a little shift. Everything changed. I had another a deep aha that uh, wasn't um, integrated in the Wheel of Consent. So I just started to create the Somatic Consent um, engagement system and literally I reshaped the frame of the circle into a square or in a multi-dimensional structure. Hi, welcome Erica. And then I founded in 2000, uh, on 2021, the Somatic Consent Academy and that's this call here today is part of that. So there is a, a, a core structure in the academy that is the foundation course. It's a five module course where the entire structure, what we do around somatic consent is in this course. And then I, my invitation is to everyone to go into this course, get the bits and bites and nuggets out of that, share what is this uh, all about, and um, then asking your questions on this very Monday call. And uh, uh, we do that later. Um, but first, I would like to invite you in this exercise about waking up the hands first. And that's about a five minute um, uh, meditation. And then I show you some keynote slides, how everything fits together, how it all functioning so that you literally get the best out of it. And then um, I would like to opening up the, the, the uh, mics and the cams so that you can ask questions and then we have an open conversation for about 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on where the time is. All right, everybody with me? All right, okay. So then I invite you to take 
an object in your hand. It can be anything. I have a little stone here. And I will explain later why am I doing that, what's the background, and what's the benefit. Um, but first, the invitation is just to take something in your hands, whatever it is. And then I invite you to lean back. So some of you do that already. I just lean forward or I lean with my shoulders on my knees. So sometimes it helps if you put a cushion on your lap so that your shoulders are relaxed like that. I can do that as well. So that your spine and your shoulders is kind of free and doesn't move and that you actually use your body uh, in a relaxed way. So there's nothing to work out. It's nothing to uh, work on. It's just the sensation in your hands. And what I would like to invite you to start with is just to make connection with that object. Yeah, so you name it, you know what it's for, you know how to use it, you know the entire story about that, where it's from, uh, maybe who created it, you know, all these kind of things. So the story, the context around that object is obvious. And then I invite you to go a level deeper than this context and the meaning of the object into the, into the um, haptic. So there are different nerve endings in your hands. They have different functions and one of them is detecting the temperature. Another one is, is it solid or soft? Is it round or sharp? So you get a lot of information out of that object and that doesn't mean much, it's just the haptic information. And then it doesn't matter how fast you go, I invite you to slow down your speed by half and slow it down by half again. And what we are looking for is a spot somewhere on your skin, on your hands, that might be your palm or between your fingers, your nail bed or your fingertips. We're looking for a kind of a tinglish, pleasant, electromagnetic, nice sensation. And when you find that somewhere, then I invite you to just stay there and just to feel. So, nowhere to go here, nothing to get, nothing to give, and Experiment with keeping your eyes closed or open, whatever works better for you to sink into the sensation there in your finger, in your hands. And we stay here for about three, four minutes. And I invite you to just drink this sensation all in. And if feelings coming up, welcome them and bring your attention back. If thoughts coming in, they are welcome, bring your attention straight back. And just allow yourself to just be with this sensation. Just allow your breath to flow.
Notice what you notice while you are in connection with the earth. The sensation in your hand that might even feel pleasurable. Slowly, slow your movement down till they stop. Stay there for a moment. And just notice what you notice in your body. all of you is welcome. It doesn't matter what it is. All right, and then slowly and gentle, I invite you to opening up your eyes again if they're still closed. attention back to the screen and um, before I start going into the slides that I would like to show you I would like to invite you to opening up your cam uh, your microphone your cam if you want to and if you want to share how you feel right now after doing that for about five minutes feel absolutely welcome to Express what do you notice right now? How do you feel? What's going on in there after doing that? So so we have a part in our brain that calls the parental cortex yeah, the parental cortex is connected to your sensory part of the somatic nervous system so where every sense that you ever had in your life is stored so when, whenever you have a sensual feeling in your hands, in your skin, it's getting stored in there for the reason of creating that memory that, for example, when you put your, your hand on a stove, that you know just, oh, so that you know, don't put your hand on a stove. So therefore, when you have a wire in your hands and you know there's electricity in, you have the memory immediately when you had an electric shock there in the past. So just like uh, thanks for sharing that. So 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 this story is directly connected to a sensual experience that you had in your skin once. So thank you for that. Who else want to share something? So um, as you have heard that um, there are some of you had some stories around the object. And some of you had some feelings coming up and some of you had some thoughts coming up. And I share um, sometimes one of the maps that cause the three components of pleasure. And so what's literally for the uh, dynamic that what we're doing here. So we're just literally training our attention around pleasure. So you feel something, right? And we're just training our capacity of our attention to stay focused on one specific thing and that's the stimuli. So the stimuli is a vital part of the somatic nervous system. Yeah. So the stimuli is either, you know, when you feel something it's either on or it's off. There's not much more to it. It's either there or it's not there. Maybe you have a memory or there's a, some um, uh, residue, but it's this is all what it is. It's on or it's not on. Yeah. You have a sensation you feel or you don't feel it. So the other part so of the three components is the context and the story. 
what is the context and the story that we have, for example, that you said, um, Jan, about the stone, 12 years, vision quest, long time back, you know, so, so we can put a lot of context and meaning on an object. Does it mean anything? Maybe, I don't know. So uh, everybody has to just declare that for themselves. But I want to let you know that as well, the meaning can either amplify your stimuli or decrease your stimuli. Yeah? I want to tell you a story that I love to share from a friend in Bali who is laying in a bathtub and feeling herself on the edge of the bathtub and have this blissful moment and feels kind of really nice and feeling herself and has this experience and is nearly blissing out and the next day she is looking on the bathtub what was it actually and then she saw that was dried chicken shit yeah would she have had the same experience if she would have known it is dried chicken shit the, the night before i don't know maybe more i can't tell but to give you the idea about that your meaning can either increase or decrease your stimuli but the stimuli in itself is to a degree when you train this experience with the object you can detach your stimuli from the meaning and have a much deeper dive into your emotional and into your um, sensual experience of your body yeah? so that your stimuli is not dependent on the meaning so this is literally what I'm doing here so what I want to do next in the next and it, I try to make it as sharp and as crisp as I possibly can. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. I will give you a lot of meaning and stimuli because switching my um, uh, 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 screen on and share something with you will just feed your visual stimuli. And I will want to speak to a cognitive part in your brain that has to do with the stimuli so that you have literally an, like an... Um, a cognitive build on what we just have done and some other structures about somatic consent and how it all works and how it all fits together. The base. Um, the base is literally that part what we just have done. So we're building the foundation of touch and connection. So the base is literally the sensory inflow and I call the base as well your your domain. So that what you have a right to and what you have a responsibility for. So that belongs to you. Yeah, so your base is everything that belongs to you. So this is how I can say it. So um, there's all your feelings, you know, your body, your thoughts, your beliefs, your desires, your limits, your boundaries, and literally taking ownership of all that. So, and I want to show you in the next slide um, what the difference in, is between direct pleasure and indirect pleasure and what indirect pleasure is literally doing when you kind of neglect your capacity to feel and not operating from your base from your internal experience of what you sense so um, you can see this picture of the hand now everybody perfect okay so when you move your hand your brain is sending signals to your muscles to go in action right so you move and when another person is involved in this dynamic, one second, I need to change something here. So when another person is involved in this dynamic, uh, there's a response coming back. So you do something and something is coming back to you. And when this response that is coming back that you do activates your pleasure center. So um, you literally feel kind of, um, joy about somebody else goes into a response this is um, what we call indirect pleasure so it is their pleasure is your pleasure so you go into an action so you do something to get a response to feel good about yourself that somebody feels good about that what you're doing yeah you get an idea what i mean with indirect pleasure yeah so indirect pleasure again is you do something and you get a response and this is in the entire structure of somatic consent and in the engagement system what I would like to invite you to turn around. So normally the default is indirect pleasure 
And in somatic consent, we uh, create the default as direct pleasure. So we start to put that on number one and the first experience, your base, that this needs to be in place. So literally, um, it's a little bit like when you're sitting in an airplane, you know, it's just like, and they, the stewardess is doing this demonstration with the oxygen mask. Put the mask on yourself first before you help others. This is something similar. Find pleasure, find direct pleasure first before you touch somebody and get their respond. Don't make yourself dependent on their respond. So um, this is how it works to turn direct pleasure into uh, indirect pleasure into direct pleasure. So as we have done that with our hands, there are a gazillion nerve ending in your hands. Yeah? And because there is an... Um, uh, uh, that are connected to your brain, to your pleasure center, there, is, there are, is a massive part in your brain dedicated to your hands, making sense of the world and feeling yourself. And um, this is what we're tapping in. And this part that was there before our personality got uh, created was before we could speak, before we could think, we could feel and we could sense. And then we just put layers on layers on layers on top of that while we're growing up and becoming adults. So, um, and this is what we do here. So when you are in action, and I don't know if my mouse is showing the right thing, but when you are in action and you go with that action toward a felt sense of pleasure in your skin, this is what direct pleasure is. Super simple. It's either on or it's not on, on or on. So every one of you has felt it. You could feel the sensation in your skin, super simple, and, uh, and everybody has access to that. So this is what we literally do in the academy uh, this two times a week. So we're waking up your hands to embody this principle where the entire somatic consent in, uh, the system is built on. So, so direct pleasure, is for yourself while you are in action. But here comes the question. How is it when you touch another person? Can you stay in connection with your sensations? Can you still feel yourself? And how do you feel when your inflow is not open? What's coming up for you if you shut down when you touch another person. So the question is, why is it difficult for you to be in action and feel yourself when you touch somebody? And I want to give you a few examples. It might be shame. It might be you're feeling guilty, fear, some beliefs. They don't like me. Fear of rejection. You might have bad memories, like the wire that uh, Daniel said, or chicken shit, or whatever. Expectations. So when you do something, the other person is expecting something, or you expect something to come back. Being too selfish, or any form of conditioning on top of this, you know, of the raw pureness of sensory inflow. So, um, what I would like you to do is for a few moments I invite you to take a few um, moments and feel for yourself why is it difficult for you to be in action and feel yourself when you touch another person and feel free to write that in the chat or write it down for yourself or uh, however you want to do that um, and we can talk about that later and again why is it difficult for you to be in action and feel yourself when you touch another person so that there's nothing wrong here or bad about it. It's just the fact of it. We all have that. There's nothing wrong or bad about that. But why is it difficult for you to be in action to touch another person? And again, there's nothing wrong about indirect pleasure or bad about that. And all of us need that and use it as a professional in many different ways. So we all have the indirect, but 
Why is the direct route for you difficult to feel when you touch another person? So what I want to say here is that when the indirect route of pleasure is the only realm that you have, and most people that I know of relate in that world of indirect pleasure, you make yourself dependent on what is coming back from the other person and you miss out on this entire you know, landscape of direct pleasure and the true power from within. So we talked about this a little bit um, uh, uh, in the shadows and I don't know some of you have seen the shadows but the main thing is that the shadows um, are based on this dynamic that it's difficult for us to feel when we're touching somebody else. So you find the kind of the roots of all the shadows in the engagement system and you see the system at the very end based on this dynamic because it's difficult for most people to feel themselves when they touch somebody. So this simple exercise uh, and that what we just have done to find direct pleasure is this number one secret of somatic consent where everything is built on. So, uh, so this world of direct pleasure is where true connection and intimacy with yourself is rooted on and where you really grow. It's an inside job. Yeah? And it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. The more you practice, the more you will find out about yourself. So in Somatic Consent, you learn these crucial rules of self-awareness and empowerment. There's autonomy, your ability to experience direct pleasure and asking for what you really want and expressing your limits. That will send a benchmark uh, in your life for how effectively you can guide others. So I like to use this kind of frame. You can only guide people as far as you have gotten yourself. And when you have difficulties with the direct route of pleasure and you have shadows hanging out there, you probably might have difficulties with people who can't find it themselves. Yeah? And then the indirect dynamic is normally engaging and this is where most people hanging out in that shadow world trying to give something that they're not willing to give and pretending that something is going on what doesn't. Very generalized, please stay with me, I will show you uh, the next step here. So the dynamic is that uh, in somatic consent that this goes beyond um, technical skill and this is about creating your base of personal empowerment and autonomy from which you can empower others with uh, in your existing skills that you already have but you build that on this direct route of pleasure and you don't make yourself dependent on the indirect route of pleasure. So um, this is what I'm uh, inviting people to do practice more and more and more to really make this the ground of your sensed feeling of yourself. So, and uh, another thing that the entire somatic consent um, engagement system and all principle that we're working with in the academy and in somatic consent is based on this dynamic of the direct route. So this is creating, it's a cornerstone, it's the, the root, the core of everything. So I have here some slides, I don't know how I want to weave them in. So um, that's the idea about the base. So building your base is literally the key to real human connection and becomes really life-changing that I've seen in myself and so many people. And at the base is kind of the starting point where you learn this vital differences between direct and indirect pleasure. And when and how to use it and what happens when you ignore that. So um, it's literally an anchor to ensure that uh, as you climb higher on your journey of real connection, you will remain grounded and authentically express your truths, your desires, your boundaries and your limits whenever they come up. And from here you can become an expert of yourself, literally like a musician, that the more you practice, the better you will become. And my invitation to you is to create this 
internal symphony of connection and pleasure. So this is literally what the direct and indirect dynamics are. But I would like to top this up on the next level. And this is where this becomes really amazing. And that is the three minute game. So within the somatic consent engagement system, we combine this base with the three minute game. And the three minute game stands for four different ways of human interactions through touch. And that is creating the engagement zones in the entire system. And I will show you that in a few moments. So this framework serves as a touch point for authentic connection and it provides valuable insights into your natural desires and established boundaries by practicing consent on a somatic level. So it's not a rational thinking process. It has to do with the pure embodiment of your felt sense. So practicing this gains, game in combination with the engagement system helps you to clarify who is in action and who the action is really for. So this exercise literally teaches you kind of how to dance between your desires and limits giving and receiving. And I would like to show you next is this slide so that you will embody a giving and receiving in all relationships at work or in everyday life on a different level. And this skill will help you to connect with others in a genuine way and you understand consent in many different situations. It's like this uh, philosopher Plato said, just like you can discover more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. So um, this is how it works. So, so there are four different things. Yeah, One thing is that when my hand comes towards you, is my hand doing what I want? Or when my hand is coming towards you, is my hand doing what you want? Yeah, there are two different things. And when your hand is coming towards me, is your hand doing what you want? Or when your hand is coming towards me, is your hand doing what I want? Yeah. So, and this is how this game works. So you start with three minutes, but you play, of course, as long as you uh, agree with somebody else. Okay, there's somebody else coming in. I let the person in. So in short, what it means is um, that, uh, one second here, I do what I want. I do what you want. You do what you want and you do what I want. So there are four different ways and this four different ways of touch that um, is all within your limits or the limits of the other person. And what that clarifies is who is doing the action and who the action is really for because these are completely two different things. And this is what I would like to show you. And are you still with me? Am I too fast? Is that too much? Do you want me to continue and doing a little bit more before I go into, yeah? So, so, so that you get the real thing. I love that. Okay, so, um, so this thing kind of creates a developmental blueprint because we are all in good in one of the four and in other two or other three, we are really bad. Yeah, and that's the question. Where can you improve? Where can you go deeper? Where can you learn more about yourself? And for most of us is the first thing that we have done touching somebody else for ourselves. So going in action and activate the direct route. This is where most people lacking their own confidence. So waking up the hands guides you in your base and the three minute game leads you into the engagement zones. And you have in the engagement zones, this, this is the kind of compass that I want to show you. It's either your action and it's for you, or it's your action and it's for them, or it's their action and it's either for you, or it's their action and it's for them. So either or. So here you have the four different ways. It's either your action or their action, it's either for you or for them. And now the question is, how can you determine when it, when it is was, what for whom? And this is not how it feels, it is the consent part. What's the agreement? 
who is doing the action and who is it for. So let's start with the first part. Your action for you needs a request. And this is, can I touch you? May I touch you? May I feel you? And that needs permission. Yeah, That's the consent part that is covering permission. Or when it's their action and it's for you, it needs a different request and that's the request, can you do such and such and such? Will you do such and such? And that needs an agreement that is not permission. That's the second part of consent. So one is permission, the other one is an agreement. They're two different things. And when it's their action and it's for them, you need to give permission. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you have permission. Yes, you are allowed to. Yes, you can have my car. Yes, yes, you can feel me. Yes, you can touch me. And when it's your action for them, then you need to agree. Yes, I can do that. Maybe five minutes, maybe ten. Yeah, I'm willing to do that. That's okay. So now we go into the dynamic when it is for you, you are on the receiving side of life. And here it is about what you want and your desires. And here you make a request. When it's for them, you are on the giving side of life. And this is about what are you willing to. And this is about your limits and making offers. So my experience is that when people have this kind of naturally embodied kind of people levitate towards um, this people because they have an, an, an kind of a an, an deeper sense of kind of understanding and embodiment. This is a, it's, it's, it's a radiance, it's a vibrant frequency that people resonate um, when, when this is in place. So, so now you see this entire blueprint of the system as a summit for personal, professional and spirit, spiritual development through a playful practice and exploration. And this is at the end the entire somatic consent engagement system. So this combines the entire system as a roadmap through a playful practice and exploration, including the shadows. ka -ding! <laughs> That was as fast, as close I can do that. Now I stop my screen share, uh, my, my, uh, stop my share. If you want to take a screenshot, please feel free if you would like that. I can send you as well via email uh, the engagement uh, system. It's in the book, it's in the courses, and it's in many places. But this is what everything is built on. So this is what somatic consent is literally all about. Okay, stop my sharing. Coming back. God, there was a lot of talking. So, any questions? Anything that anybody would like to know? Anything you would like to share? Any ahas? Any um, insights? Any confusions? Any ideas? Please feel free to unmute yourself and let's have a conversation. Yeah, let that come in place, practice a lot and really embody it from a place of um, feeling it. And um, as you just joined the academy, there is on the left hand side of the menu in the academy, there is a link where you can download the book. And um, as you would have joined just uh, uh, yesterday, but uh, we will do an onboarding call in the coming days if you want to, and I can show you around where everything is so that you literally have access to the book and you can you know, download that and read this entire thing. Same is for you, uh, Daniel, and everybody else uh, who is in the academy um, can have this onboarding call so that I show you around where everything is so that you find your way through it. So... You know, when, when people have the direct route not in place, they have difficult to operate in the four different quadrants of the engagement system. But when people have all four quadrants in place, when they have embodied 
my action for myself, my action for you, you action for me and you action for yourself so that people can express their desires and their limits and have a clear com communication uh, skill towards that. People become really clear, people become really uh, relaxed, people become really open because they are in every engagement self-confident. And what happens is, and I've seen that specifically teaching practitioner and facilitator, when they have that in place, that people radiate naturally towards them because they feel safe and they feel valued in their own limits and in their own desires. Because if somebody has embodied that, they can ask somebody else at any given moment, hey, is there anything that you need? What would you like? Because the com communication piece is in place and uh, it creates literally an, an, an alignment. So there's no hiding needed. There is no protection necessary. There is no need for um, um, defensiveness. And that's kind of an, a frequency that, uh, that happens. Well, I, what I can say to that is, if I'm allowed to, <laughs> is that when we please other people because we want to have a respond that we want to be liked and the other people don't react the way how we desire that, then you can measure yourself that you have an agenda when you please others that you're feeling disappointed because it's not coming back what you want. <laughs> so disappointment is always an indicator that we are in a pleasing position. So I like that. So I want to say one thing about the, the direct route. So the direct route is not limited when you are in action and feel. Yeah, so but this is a starting point of this entire thing. This is where you find it. You can feel the direct route when you ask somebody else to do something for you. So when you're getting touched and somebody is touching you, you feel the same direct route like you feel when you touch yourself on somebody else. But the question is, the action is not coming from you in this case, the action comes from somebody else. But then the question is, is that an action that you have requested? Or is that an action that somebody is doing for themselves? And if somebody is doing that for themselves, but they can't feel themselves, and they do that action to get the response out of you, how do you feel when somebody touches you and want to get the reaction from you. I hate that when people do that to me. I actually say, my, my, I, I can detect that in, an, in a split of a second and I need to say, take your hands off, don't touch me. Okay. Again, I just need to break that down because I just want to make sure that this is not kind of complicated. It is in a way, but it's actually really simple. So when you have this activated with the object and you can feel yourself, yeah, you can feel yourself on the wall, you can feel yourself on somebody else, and you can not only feel yourself with your hands, you can wrap your entire body on somebody else and the direct inflow is open and you have full access because you have permission, the person can take care of their limits and you are full activated. So you feel yourself. The direct route. So now when you turn that around when somebody else is touching you, so they are in action, they're either in action for themselves or they are in action for you. When they are in action for you, are they doing what you want or are they doing what they think you want and is maybe not even close to that what you desire or are they in action for themselves you have given them permission 
but they can't feel a flip. And all what they do is they touching you to get a response from you. So I can feel that immediately when people touch me to get this response. So I say, stop, don't do that. But I remember in the past where I didn't have this knowledge and the embodiment of that, I was going along to touch of people where I was performing a reaction to make the other person happy about what I thought what they think should come from me when they were doing something. And I see Jan smiling, <laughs> and, and, and I guess that is kind of resonating somewhere, right? So this is what we're cleaning up with, with somatic consent. So we're taking all this assumption-based projections and ideas out of the pot, and we're coming back to feeling ourselves, and we bring that to the, to the core of the four ways of human touch and engagements. And so literally from there we built this entire structure into an interpersonal love and care dynamic of, you know, it just becomes a spiritual path if you want to say so. Yes, so it's a, it's a really interesting question because this is what I have learned way back in 99 or 98 when I started with this thing, before I was knowing I was starting with it. And there was a practice where it was just like where you start feeling your hands like that. And what that does is it just starts a dualistic experience in your, in your awareness. So you feel on one side the touched and the be touched part. Yeah? And what that does, it creates a distraction in your awareness. So you divide your attention. But when you're touching this one here, there is nothing else. And you are radically thrown back on this um, non-binary non experience of yourself. There's nothing else. Nothing is coming back. You're not giving anything. You don't have a dualistic experience. It's just one thing. That's it. Yeah. And this is the hardest part for some people to find because there's nobody else involved. And I've talked in other kind of classes about the function of the nervous system, about co-regulation, self-regulation and dysregulation and how that neurologically is all wired. But I don't want to bore you to death today about that. So there's, there's a lot of structure around that is pretty complicated. But here comes one thing that I would like to share with all of you. And I'm curious how you tick around that is. So the fourth thing I have not shared. So the first thing is, can I do what I want and feel myself when I'm in action? Or when you are in action, you're doing what I want and I have direct pleasure exactly where and how I want that. Or when your hand, hand comes towards me, um, are you doing what you like? Yeah. So first of all, um, <clears throat> When I'm being touched and the person who is touching me asks me if they can feel me in a certain way and I have given my limits and say, yeah, you can do such and such, but don't put anything in any hole or, you know, don't, uh, don't touch my body under my uh, belt line or, you know, whatever the limits is that I'm taking so that the other person respect my limits and not testing my limits. So when the other person can feel themselves, this touch is the most delicious touch that I can imagine in my life. So I can feel complete direct pleasure when somebody else can feel themselves without an agenda. And this is the most delicious, exquisite, beautiful, amazing, desirable, uplifting, enlightening, touch connection that I can imagine in my body, in my system, on my skin. And I'm curious how you think about that. How do you feel about that? Yes. And they can feel themselves. They have asked you. You have given permission. They are completely embodied. 
you feel really good what they do they just yeah this is this is this is enlightening touch <laughs> No, they touching me for themselves. Yeah, they touching me for themselves, and they have asked me if they can touch me, and I say, yeah, you can touch me. That's fine, as long as you stick to my limits. And when they can feel themselves without they need to get the respond or reaction from me, and they are fully connected to the sensory inflow, so. To their direct inflow and they are in action for themselves and I give access to my body this is for me the most delicious touch that I can imagine I love that touch it's so incredibly beautiful I I don't I don't receive I experience a beautiful touch and that's a different thing because I give access and the other person is receiving because they are doing. But I experience an, an, an incredible sensation because if my direct inflow is open, I can feel direct pleasure when somebody's touching me for themselves. And what that does is when I'm being touched from somebody who can feel themselves, I can feel into their intention and I can feel if they have an agenda. And whenever they have an agenda, they want to get something out of me, my nervous system is immediately responding to that. And I say, no way, take your hands off. Because my nervous system became so fine-tuned that I can literally micro-read other people's responses and then I can check in. Actually, are you trying to get something out of me here? So I can, I, I can communicate that then. Yes, what I assume, and I don't know if that's true, so you let me know. What you're talking about is that other people do to you what they want. They have no attunement to your limits. They can't feel your boundaries and you cannot express your boundaries. And instead of you enjoying what is happening to you, you endure and you're going along to that what is happening because it's more important that somebody else does something than how you feel about it. And that's the way where we stop with somatic consent. We say, no, there's no enduring, there's no going along, there's no um, pleasing other people anymore and settling for less and taking the crumbs when we have full access to this amazing universe of touch and connection. Yeah, um, you know, with, with this pleaser thing, what I normally say, it's not a really one solution serves all, but it's pretty much close to it. What I normally say, and this is what I have done in the very beginning of this dynamics, is specifically for neutoric pleasers to say, you know, if there is no request, don't do anything. If nobody's asking you for anything, don't go in action. This is an interesting question. Is he a super receiver or is he in a place of entitlement and want you to do something to make him feel good about himself. Is he, yeah. yes, he, he's probably coming from the shadow or he, he's probably exploiting. <laughs> he's probably projecting all his desires that you as the pleaser have to know what the right thing is that he needs. I call that the pillow starfish. Just like, okay, I'm ready, do the right things. <laughs> yeah. The thing of maybe to find a distinction there is when you go in action for yourself and feel yourself and you're literally in connection with your own skin and the inflow is open and you be allow yourself to become in a healthy way selfish within somebody else's limits. You could literally as well give somebody else a massage 
have your direct inflow open and really enjoy what you're doing by knowing it's for them. You can massage and squeeze your hand into somebody else's body by knowing it's for you. But then you don't give, then you just receive and then you just allow yourself to get a little bit greedy and just like, yeah, I don't want to squeeze here, I want to do this and uh, this fits nice here. And then just literally grab and grasp into somebody else's meat. That's so delicious when you have permission to do that. Yeah. So by saying that again, the direct route is accessible in all four dynamics. But the starting point of embodiment is, and this is what we all need to re-establish, is going in action for ourselves and feeling ourselves while we have permission from somebody else, else within their limits. And that is for all of us here in the room, in the entire world, an internal process that we cannot avoid. There's no substitution for that because that's the raw function of human connection and engagement. And if that's not in place, we will have difficult difficulties in human engaging and relating. And that's what I want to clean up with. And this is why I'm providing what I'm doing. All right. My invitation is take something in your hands again. Let's do it again. So let all these meaningful words or non-meaningful words just reverberate in your mind. All this stuff that I shared, that I told, some of them um, it's landing somewhere. Some of them um, is not resonating. So please take everything that resonates and what doesn't resonate, maybe put on an aesthetic bookshelf. So that everything that you think, everything that you feel, everything that was coming up is absolutely welcome. You might have some stories, some memories, some ideas. And whatever it is, I invite you to bring your attention straight back to this sensory experience there in your skin, in your hands, while you are in action. And you might want to touch with your hand over the object or touch with the object over your hand and somewhere where it feels delicious. And it normally takes about two to three minutes that the nervous system is adapting and you're tapping into a sphere of deliciousness. Your nervous system is regulating, you're releasing oxytocin, you're relaxing. The invitation here is again to make this very experience of your in action for yourself your default, your base, your foundation, independent from anybody and anything. And that's a choice, it's an inside job. If this is in place, everything else will literally fall into your lap. Hmm.
And just notice what you notice, how your nervous system and your body is just calming down. Literally bridge from your mind back into your body through your feeling part of your sensory inflow. So simple. It's too good to be true. Hmm. Slowly slow down till you stop. Opening your eyes, bring your attention back to the screen. And before we doing a check out for everyone in here who is already in the academy please invite your friends, <laughs> ex-lovers, anybody else who could benefit from that. <laughs> if you think just like, damn, I should have known that when I was just uh, in school, then <laughs> I thought that. Um, so everybody you have, uh, you would like to share that with, share that with. So everybody is welcome every first Monday of the month to this open monthly Monday. So please invite friends. Honestly, I need you because the message that I'm giving out is obviously not reaching enough people, but I need people to multiply that if that resonates with you. So find your way of um, finding words and send them this way. And everybody who is not in the academy, each and one of you is so welcome to join and I just pop a link here. So copy that link and have a read what is there and that will guide you to a landing page where you can literally have an onboarding call and you can check in with me so there's a lot of stuff that you can um, have a look and um, and uh, you will as well get the information what is available on the Academy so what you will get what it cost and so on da -dee da -dee da -dee da I'm horrible in marketing I say that straight ahead and uh, but I would like to check out now for um, the one who came here first time today. What's your takeaway? What's your aha? Um, and how do you feel? One, two, three, five words, whatever you resonate with. So everyone, thank you for joining today. That was 90 minutes. We lost a few along the track, that's fine. So thank you for sticking with us and uh, you're welcome. Uh, uh, anytime, any Monday in the Academy um, to any call and um, invite friends, invite people and share that stuff because I think the world needs that more than ever. All right, so because I don't want to do it alone and I can't do it alone, so we need people to feel dedicated and inspired of, of that stuff. So. Thanks and have a beautiful evening and uh, love to see you next time. Bye.